this book, The Last Days of Richard III by John Ashdown Hill, starts with an interesting claim. It claims that Richard III never heard of the Battle of Bosworth. Yeah, alright, most of his life. Yeah, because it hadn't happened yet. Sure. But I'd think he'd heard of it whilst he was there. Chiswick, fresh horses. We may need to escape quickly. Halt! Foul villain. Stand and fight. Ah, Henry Tudor. We meet at last. Now, prepare to die. You first, bitch. But first, tell me, where the fuck am I? Battle of Bosworth, mate. The Battle of Bosworth? I have never heard of it. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I think you're about to be betrayed. Quick, to the tower. This is Past Force. Okay, seriously though, Richard III. If there's two things that anybody knows about him, it's died at the Battle of Bosworth, 1485, 1483, killed his nephews, the princes in the tower. If you ask me, Richard is definitely involved in the murder, somehow. Maybe he didn't hold the pillow down over his nephew's face, but I think, to some degree, he does hold responsibility. And you've only got to look at his actions throughout the spring and summer of 1483 to see that these are not the actions of an innocent man. These are the actions of someone who is seizing the throne, someone who is seizing political power. When people are looking at this, when people are examining it, investigating it, they're asking one question. Who wanted the princes dead? Who benefited? Richard, Henry Tudor, Margaret Beaufort, all the usual suspects. But let's turn it around. Let's ask, who wanted the princes alive? The answer is not many. And the majority of them were either his mother's family, the Woodvilles, or supporters of the Woodvilles. Let's go back a bit. Let's look at who these people were. Let's start with Edward's mother, Elizabeth Woodville, Queen of England, wife of Edward IV. There were some claims that the marriage was bigamous, but and there's very little substantial evidence to support this. But, here's the thing. Elizabeth Woodville was hated by most of the aristocracy. And I don't mean they just disliked her. I mean they had an intense, horrible, horrific loathing of her. Because she was deemed a commoner. She was deemed as being non-aristocratic. Ew! She's common! Ugh! We can't have someone common as queen. Ew! Was she though? Was she really common? I mean, she wasn't a muck-raking peasant. She was more well, more the medieval equivalent of upper middle class. 
Her family were from what you might consider minor aristocracy. Landowning, but not top tier, powerful elite. And to make it even more clear that she wasn't exactly your average commoner, her mother was Princess Jaquetta of Luxembourg. She's the daughter of a princess. She's not exactly common. So this commoner argument, it just sounds like an excuse by the aristocracy who just decided they didn't like her, they didn't like her family. It was, I think what you'd call aristocratic prejudice. And actually, her mother, before marrying Elizabeth's father, had been married to Bedford, brother of Henry V. So she's got, she's got royal connections. But Henry V, Lancastrian, her family were Lancastrian supporters at one point. Her mother was married into the Lancastrian dynasty. She's, she's the enemy. She's not House of York. The other thing was, she wasn't a foreign princess. Most kings at uh, this period in history, couple of exceptions, married foreign aristocracy, foreign princesses. It wasn't for love, it was more for political advantage. It was more gaining international political influence. But of course, despite being the daughter of Princess Jaquetta of Luxembourg, there was no political advantage, international political advantage, in the marriage between Edward IV and Elizabeth. And the aristocracy of the time, the landowning elites, the top tier aristocracy, there was nothing in it for them. They couldn't gain any power from this. They couldn't gain any influence. They couldn't get, by proxy, any land. So of course, they're gonna take against this. They're gonna take against the marriage. They're gonna take against Elizabeth Woodville. And here we come to another issue. Edward marries Elizabeth Woodville. The aristocracy, the elites, they hate this marriage. They already hate it. But then Edward the Fourth, he starts promoting his wife's family. He starts giving them positions of power, land, influence. And especially when his heir, Edward, is born, he starts giving them positions of influence and power over his son. And of course the aristocracy, they despise this. They're not being promoted. The Woodvilles are, those commoners are getting land, influence, power. They've got influence over the heir to the throne. Court jealousy. It fosters a culture of jealousy and prejudice in the court against these outsiders, these newcomers, the Woodvilles. And what does this lead to? Feuding, rivalry, division, a series of complex rivalries that are way too complex to go into now. Well, it leads to division within the House of York. Let's, let's go down to the air now, to Edward. Anthony Rivers. Queen's brother. He is given the position of Governor 
of Edward V. Position of immense power, immense influence. At Ludlow, Edward is surrounded by members of his mother's family, including his half-brother, Thomas Gray. He's not so much a Yorkist, not being brought up a Yorkist. He's being brought up as a Woodville, under the Woodville influence. And you can already see where this is going. The Yorkist faction really aren't going to like this. And the person who hated the Woodvilles the most, the person who was the most jealous of them, despite having vast, vast amounts of power in the North and vast amounts of influence, despite being a prosperous, successful man, the Duke of Gloucester, the future Richard III. So we can only imagine the idea of a Woodville King, Edward. We can only imagine what that would do to him, the rage, the anger, the jealousy that would induce. And so, in 1483, when Edward IV dies, we see how Richard acts on this jealousy, on this hatred. So, when Edward IV dies in 1483, in April 1483, the Woodvilles look like they're going to get political control, they're going to get political power, they're going to get a lot more political influence. So, what does Richard do? Well, as Edward is riding from Ludlow to London for his coronation with his uncle Rivers and half-brother Grey and a huge, huge retinue, Richard sweeps down from the north, meets them at Northampton in the Midlands. He arrests Grey and Rivers, accuses them of treason, and later on he has them executed. He essentially wipes out, at that point, most of the Woodville influence. Suddenly, most of the people who would want Edward V alive are gone. And the only people left are people who would only benefit from his death. Which leads to which leads to another interesting question. Why then kill them? Why not let Edward rule, just try and gently manipulate and influence him? Why kill him? Why kill his brother? Edward is a child of the Woodvilles. He's a product of a Woodville upbringing. He's grown up being influenced by the Woodvilles. He's got Woodville blood in him. And the same is true of his younger brother, Richard. He's not so much influenced by the Woodvilles, but he's still a Woodville prince at the end of the day. And Edward, he's not a tiny little kid at this point. He's 12, coming on 13. He's quite intelligent. He's, he's said to be advanced and wise beyond his years. He's supposed to be quite knowledgeable. He's he's definitely aware of what's going on. He knows the charges against Grey and Rivers are complete bollocks. 
he knew what was going on. He knew that Richard was up to no good. Elizabeth Woodville was the same. She knew Richard was up to no good. She tried to keep the Duke of York, her second son, in sanctuary at Westminster Abbey, but she was forced to give him up to Richard's control. She knew what was going on. And I'm pretty sure the Duke of York must have nine years old, nine, ten, old enough to know that something was going on at least. So they'd have been aware, both of them, of Uncle Richard's dastardly deeds. And if you let either of them get a sliver of power after that, what are they going to do to Gloucester, to Richard? History! It's a thing of the past! It's a thing of the past.